subcommittee will come to order. We want to welcome our guest and our panel today. We're, uh, Mr. Katz is on his way. We've been informed that he will be here in just a few minutes. So we will uh, we'll get started with uh, opening statements and then um, get right to our, uh, right to our testimony. Um, today's hearing continues the Committee's oversight and examination of this Administration's effort to use taxpayer dollars to fund a massive green energy experiment. The 2009 stimulus directed around $90 billion towards green initiatives, including loan guarantees for green energy firms, money to weatherize homes, green jobs training grants, and many other projects. The President told the American people that, quote, green jobs would be a major force not just for environmental conservation, but for economic recovery. The President said that, we will harness the sun and the winds and the soil to fuel our cars and to run our factories. And he promised that our country would create millions of green jobs which would help us compete in the global economy. However, over two and a half years into this experiment, the available evidence demonstrates these efforts have wasted vast sums of taxpayer dollars and have possibly caused economic harm. Even the Washington Post editorial board recently noted that green jobs offer a dubious rationale for Federal support of clean energy technology. To the extent that government creates jobs by subsidizing particular companies, it does so by shifting resources that might have created jobs elsewhere." Close quote. This committee welcomes and embraces new businesses and technologies with the aim of increasing environmental conservation, but it is important that, we be brought about, that these be brought about by market forces, not political whims. Today we have a panel of expert witnesses who can speak to how the Administration's green energy efforts have panned out and where we should go from here. The Inspector Generals from both the Department of Labor and Department of Energy have done thorough work evaluating the challenges we have faced as the economy has undergone these green initiatives. In an audit released in September, the Department of Labor's Inspector General found that a $500 million program for training people with so-called green skills has so far produced only 1,336 jobs that have lasted over six months, with $163 million already spent. This amounts to $121,856 per successful green trainee. While these numbers are abysmal, the truth of the matter is even worse. Many of these people who went through this training to obtain, quote, green skills are likely worse off because of it. Instead of spending time looking for sustainable work or acquiring marketable skills, they acquired skills that are simply not valued in the marketplace today. This is yet again another well-intentioned government program that appears to harm many of the people it was designed to help. In his inauguration speech, the President stated in areas where government initiatives fail, quote, programs will end, and those of us who manage the public's dollars will be held to account to spend wisely to perform bad habits. The available evidence seems to indicate that programs put forth by this Administration aimed at promoting green energy and green jobs have failed and, frankly, should end. With an unemployment rate still over 9 percent and nearly $15 trillion accumulated in debt, the American people deserve more to see their government going further into the, into the red with programs that simply aren't doing the job. With that, I would yield to my good friend from Cleveland for his opening statement. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I think it is uh, right to critically analyze the uh, performance of specific programs, and that is the purpose of this committee, and I appreciate your role as Chair in doing that. Uh, the attention that has been focused on the Solyndra matter is a uh, case in point. We have, you know, these are legitimate questions that have to be asked. Um, but the concern that I have is that the, uh, the, the run-up to, to this meeting and generally to the critical analysis of the Administration's uh, inability to be able to bring forward a, a massive Green Works program. Uh, should not in any way deter us from moving forward with an effort on the part of the Federal Government to create a transition in our economy towards more sustainability in our, in our energy and in our manufacturing. For example, uh, I have long been an advocate of, a, of um, plussing up the NASA budget for the purposes of looking at areas of developing green microtechnologies where you could theoretically, now it is theoretical, create millions of new jobs involved in the design, in, in the concept, design, engineering, uh, 
manufacturing, installation, and maintenance of millions of wind and solar microtechnologies that would uh, lower our carbon foot, reduce our carbon footprint, lower our energy costs, and enable uh, an economic, an overall economic stimulus through through jobs and lower energy costs. Uh, America cannot rely on coal, which is a non-sustainable form of energy, one that is damaging to our environment for our long-term energy needs. We cannot rely on oil for our long-term energy needs. If we really had an accurate cost of uh, a gallon of oil, we would have to factor in the use of our military, which has been increasingly used to be able to secure oil, access to oil around the world. Um, and we can't rely on nuclear, which is a very shaky uh, form of energy with respect to its uh, security and the disposition of nuclear, uh, the securing of, of nuclear waste. So we have to challenge the administration to come forward with new possibilities. And today, hopefully, we will hear from the Department of Defense about some of the directions that uh, they are going in that might lead to some possibilities for the larger economy. Uh, America inevitably is going to have to go in a direction of green. Our economy must go in that direction. There is money to be made in those directions. The fact that we have seen failure at the beginning, which is important to note because it, 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 we need to know what not to do. Uh, should not cause us to conclude that there is, uh, is little or no hope of being able to uh, not just restore public confidence, but be able to restore our economy. Because in the end, that is what we are all concerned about, getting Americans back to work and finding ways to uh, where America can seize the opportunity to catch the, the, the wave that is inevitably building of, of green technologies and particularly with respect to uh, energy. So I want to again thank the Chair for holding this hearing, and I look forward to uh, hearing the witnesses' testimony. I thank the gentleman. I think he makes good points. I, I would just point out we are all for, I would think members on this side of the aisle are for uh, any new technology that can help meet our energy needs. We just, we just think the market is a much better and more efficient way of getting us there versus uh, the kind of program we are going to hear about today from, uh, from Would our my witnesses. friend yield? They have to yield. One of the things that, that I remember a few years ago is that, and this was in an uh, in investor's advice that was being given to uh, people who were interested in energy stocks, this may have been six years ago, people were being told uh, not to invest in green energy or wind, wind and solar energy and they were, because they were being seen as quote, unquote, fads, but to put the investment dollar into oil, coal, nuclear. Now, the market sometimes will go for the short-term gain, using whatever resources are there to, to, to max them out immediately for, for maximum profit, uh, without, without any necessary concern about the society at large and about the future potential. So I, you know, I, I understand you and I have had an agreement on the government not interfering in the market with respect to the bailout. We, we both voted the same way on that. But I am, I'm also saying that, the, that market forces are not always, uh, 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 according to uh, Adam Smith's invisible hand here. Does the gentleman, uh, uh, the gentleman from uh, Tennessee, or excuse me, we, we now have our Vice Chairman walk in. Does the gentlelady from New York wish to make an opening statement? Thank you. The gentlelady is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At a time when people across the United States are struggling to rebuild our economy and create jobs, I would like to thank our chairman for calling this hearing to evaluate the process and the substance of the MAC regulations. Okay. Sorry about that. Wrong hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for calling this hearing, and uh, I yield back my time. Thank the gentleman, you. Uh, gentleman from uh, Maryland, distinguished ranking member of the full committee is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I want to associate myself with the comments of Mr. Kucinich 
and um, say that I think we have to be very careful um, and not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, I think government does have a, a role to play here and a very important role. The Re Recovery uh, Act provided some $49 billion to a variety of green energy projects, and that funding has been used to develop crucial new technologies, train workers for the 21st century jobs, and improve our national security. The Departments of Energy, Defense, and Labor, and the General Services Administration have been instrumental in this effort. However, only the inspectors general from the Departments of Labor and Energy are here today. The title of today's hearing is, Where Has All the Taxpayer Money Gone? One of the largest recipients of the Federal Dollars for Green Energy Programs is the Department of Defense. In a 2010 memorandum of understanding with the Department of Energy, the Defense Department said, and I, I quote, uh, energy efficiency can serve as a force multiplier, increasing the range and endurance of forces in the field while reducing the number of combat forces diverted to protect energy supply lines as well as reducing long-term energy costs. In addition, we are developing green jobs here at home. The Brookings Institution estimates that in my home state, for example, the green jobs uh, in Maryland employ some 43,207 residents and pay out an average of $44,790 per year, which is higher than the median salary in my state. At a time when the middle class of nearly every state is shrinking, these figures are indeed good news. Finally, if we are going to remain competitive in the global economy, we must be willing to make in 